Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. I have been in Vegas <laughs> and I didn't get any sun. <laughs> but it was great, I actually got sick. So it wasn't super great, but it was fun. Fun enough, I saw Cher. I saw Cher, that's all that matters. If you're new here, hi, I'm Chelsea. I'm an illustrator from Melbourne, Australia and now I live in Florida. This week's video has been something that I've been planning on doing for a few weeks. I had the intention of filming this before Labor Day weekend and got a bit caught up. Got a lot more information than I expected from people. And I'll be honest, I was feeling a little bit bitter when I decided to make this video. So I think that kind of got in the way of being informative. So I gave myself a couple of weeks, took a breath, got some feedback from you guys, especially over on Instagram. Super duper helpful. And I'm gonna present you with all the information about red flags and clients today because we've all been burnt at some point and if I can help you prevent that happening in the future then I've done my job, that's the point of this video. So, yeah. Just to start with, I will let you know right now there are gonna be timestamps available below because I watch these videos constantly and I find it really helpful if I can jump to things that are relevant to my own personal experiences or things that I wouldn't even think to look out for. So those will be below for you. I'm gonna be starting off with some really basic things that are just general conditions that you should be met with when it comes to a client relationship of any kind. So although it does start off a little bit basic, I think these are super important. <laughs> I'm not naming and shaming anyone, by the way. I, it is tempting, I will say. It's tempting to, to do that, but I just think it looks really unprofessional. Um, so yeah, sorry to disappoint if you were here for the tea, because there's no, there's no tea. I'm going to be including some references, like things you can use uh, to better your judgement or better your wisdom of your industry, but they are going to be mostly related to the arts field because that is what I work in. So yeah, I do apologise if that's not completely relevant to you, but if you're a fellow illustrator or artist of any kind, you might find it useful. The last thing I would really like to clarify is this video is mostly based on my own experiences. Um, I have got input from other people in various creative fields, but the majority of people that I do network with and talk to and are involved with are illustrators like myself. So although I do have some feedback from people in various design fields, including architecture and web design and that kind of thing, a lot of this is going to be pertinent to illustration clients. So. There is some general info here and there are some very fair warnings for anyone in a creative business but uh, keep that in mind that I am an illustrator and I network with illustrators. That's the kind of information I'm going to be presenting for the most part. To start with, I do have some feedback from some amazing illustrators and designers and friends uh, in the creative field who gave me the rundown of some really basic um, things that clients sometimes do not do and you could consider a red flag. Um, these are things that I think should just be met by anyone's basic communication standards, um, regardless of whether or not they're your plumber or they're <laughs> someone who is designing a full page illustration for your magazine. First one is poor communication. Are they not being clear? Are they not giving you like salient points on what they want? It's annoying. <laughs> it's very annoying for you and it's problematic uh, in the long run of a project. Following on from that, are they giving you crappy feedback? Because you can't work with shit feedback. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> um, so that's something to look out for. Any mention of working for free or any lack of mention about funding for you as an artist or creator of any kind is also an issue. Be blunt, be forward about payment <laughs> and if they kind of backpedal or walk around that, that's a red flag because you deserve to be paid for your work. That's, it's just a, I feel like that doesn't need to be said, that should just be common knowledge but it happens, it happens to all of us at some point so yeah, watch out for that. <laughs> now we're moving on to the feedback from Instagram friends uh, who gave me some really good advice about their own experiences and also uh, stuff that I related to because I've experienced it as well. One of the major ones that came up from several people over on Instagram was clients who are unwilling to submit a contract or present you with any kind of licensing or even look at a contract from you. Um, that's an issue. <laughs> I've worked with clients that have had no contract between the two of us. I'm not proud to say that because 
is dodgy. It's very, very dodgy. Um, and the whole point of a contract is so that you can say, hey, you signed this thing. We agreed on this. You're not doing this. Do this. <laughs> I will have references to stuff that can help you learn about contracts in more detail at the end of the video. Look for the, the timestamps below about that. But yeah, contracts are super important no matter what level um, you are in the game as a creative and no matter what kind of client you're working for, you need an agreement of some kind so that you're on the same page, literally and like metaphorically. <laughs> if they're reluctant to pay a deposit, that's probably an issue as well. I've had experiences where deposits have been late, I've had experiences where deposits have been like kind of a lump sum thing with the first payment. I've had every kind of experience with payments or non-payments sometimes. Make sure you have something in place that says you need a deposit by a certain date or time in the project. It will help you very very much. <laughs> so if they're not willing to pay a deposit or they're kind of uh, tiptoeing around the deposit, that's probably going to make for a difficult client in the long run. If you are approached with a project and the client is claiming that no one else has been able to meet their vision until they've come to you, a pretty big red flag. <laughs> if nobody can meet their vision if they've gone through 10, 20, 50 artists and they can't meet their vision, but you, you the holy grail can, you're probably in for a difficult client. Someone else mentioned if projects get delayed or stalled, a lot. That's a big red flag. I 100% agree with that one. Uh, I've had projects that were supposed to take two weeks last six months and it's no fun and you feel constantly on edge and frustrated but also eternally grateful when they email you back and it's a really sick twisted game so that's something to look out for. Someone else mentioned requesting urgency on your part but then delaying any communication back therefore making the process really really strictly timed for you but really really lenient for them and it is really difficult to meet any kind of deadline with that kind of double standard of communication. I've had that too. <laughs> all these things <laughs> but yeah that's a tough one um, and it's something to look out for it's something to really be professional and clear about when you're experiencing it and just keep an eye on these sorts of situations the more you deal with clients the better you get at communicating with them and being direct I know in my first year or two I was really like oh <laughs> I don't know what suits you and I didn't really take myself as seriously as I should have um, because I didn't I didn't know that I should. I didn't know that I could be um, seen as a professional. And now, here I am, four years later, and I'm like, I need to get paid. <laughs> and the last one, which I think is totally relevant to us in the illustration field, is they have no idea what they want, and they are terrible at describing it, and they give you no references whatsoever. This has happened to me on so many occasions where you basically have to be another person's imagination. And when you're not meeting their specific vision in their head, which is impossible to do a lot of the time, um, it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere and it doesn't help anyone. So uh, try to set up some way of requesting certain uh, levels of reference or descriptions. I know for me, I have a document that I send everyone that says, hey, I would like to know the dimensions, I would like to know uh, what it's for, is it a gift, is it something you want as a brochure, Is it, what's, what's the purpose of it and when do you need it by? Three really simple things um, that help me get a clearer vision of what I need to make, but yeah, it's frustrating. The rest of these are based on my own experiences of freelancing over the last four years. Some of them are easy to deal with, others are just things you have to get more hard on. <laughs> One of the red flags that I've experienced the most is zero room for negotiation and this is a big one for me because if they're not willing to negotiate then I'm not willing to work most of the time. And I, I say this because I, I don't think I'm a difficult person to work with but if it's things like they're not willing to cover your hourly rate, you might not have an hourly rate and that's fine. Depending on projects, I do. So if they're not willing to cover my hourly costs of work, it's a no. If they are incorrectly crediting me or putting my name in wrong somewhere, I will bring that up. I've brought that up on multiple occasions with clients and said, hey, you've spot my name wrong on this or hey, you haven't tagged me on that. The biggest one is the social media tags because a lot of the time, publications especially, 
will not tag you and I have a really big problem with that because social media is a huge way for me to gain traffic as an artist and get clients so if I'm working with a company or a publication or an individual who won't tag me on social media that's a big problem especially if it's a series of projects that they want to take on with me because that's a part of my livelihood that exposure and payment <laughs> helps me get other clients, so that's a big problem. One thing I've noticed that's quite specific to brands and companies um, and magazines as well is how they present themselves online. I'm not going to name anybody here, you'll see it and you'll know it when you do, is they present themselves as an organisation that really loves to help artists and they really support artists and pro art, pro indie art, pro whatever, but if you find yourself working with them and they're not paying you fairly, that's 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 why they're, they're trying to lure in the, the artists that they want to work with or they they might like your stuff on social media or they might follow you on social media and you might feel flattered and then you'll find out that they want artists to work with and they don't pay them as well as they should they pay them yes but they don't pay them fairly so that's a big red flag um, just taking into account how a brand or even an individual sometimes presents themselves online can really save you a bit of work um, in terms of getting paid later. Also, if you've seen any artists featured with that publication, reach out to them and ask because there have been so many times where I've worked with magazines and publications and all kinds of stuff. And if I had just spoken to someone first about how they pay or what the turnaround time is, I would have saved myself a lot of effort. So don't be afraid to ask those sorts of questions to people who are already in the game with them because you might be saving yourself a bit of trouble. Do they have weird job titles? Uh, this is something I've noticed when you look on job listing sites for illustrators, designers, whatever. Anything that requires you to be a ninja or a wizard, like a marketing wizard, or a, I don't know, design genius or ninja, is probably not gonna take you very seriously. In my experience, those kinds of jobs always end up pushing you to do more than they pay you to and they're kind of belittling you with those cutesy little titles because you're not a marketing wizard <laughs> you are someone in marketing who worked very hard to get there and you should be treated as such same goes for any creative profession i would be wary of those kinds of job descriptions because it's a little bit insulting but also um a lot of the time those kinds of jobs actually request a lot more of you than they pay you fairly to do so this is kind of more of a personal one, but if you're not proud of the work that you're doing for a client, I think that's a sign that it's not a good relationship or that it's a red flag of some kind that it's not working. I've done work for people before where I'm like, oh, I don't like this, and I'll do it to their request and they'll say it's perfect and that they love it and they love my style. And by that point, it's not really my style anymore because I'm making changes for the client. So although, I've not had too many experiences with clients asking me to change my style so much. Not being proud of the work, I feel, is a really strong feeling when you know that it's not right. <laughs> and it might help you steer away from that kind of client in the future. So, something to think about. And the last one, <sighs> exposure. Where do I begin with exposure? Um, you should be paid. <laughs> I've said that before, but you should be paid and you should be tagged and you should be acknowledged at the very least for what you do. I, I, I just don't like the idea of giving someone your work just to make their something look good. So I'm not really that good with the whole exposure thing. If you're comfortable with it and you're happy, sure, but I try to do this for a living and giving someone my work with no financial compensation isn't cool. So yeah, exposure is not for me. <laughs> So now I'm going to be moving on to the reference information that you should have if you're an illustrator or an artist or any kind of creative. This first round of stuff, the four books that I'm going to discuss with you, are very much illustration related. <laughs> but I do have some other things that should help you in the long run as well if you're in other creative professions. So the first one is, <sighs> I always struggle to say this one, so bear with me. It is. Graphic Artist Guild Pricing and Ethical Guidelines Handbook. It is a hefty bastard. And I bought this last year on Amazon when I moved to the US. It's the 
15th edition, the have got newer ones now, but I'm using this as my point of reference for the time being. This, to me, is the holy grail for US-based creatives. It has everything you could possibly need to do with contracts, licensing, pricing, legal rights, etc. It has a lot of examples of contracts and a lot of really useful legal information. It covers graphic design, web and interactive design, illustration, cartooning, animation, and surface design. So there's a lot of good information here if you are a creator um, in those fields. I purchased it a year ago, so it's still very relevant to me. There's clauses on social media, exposure, all the kinds of things you need to know if you're looking at going into a creative industry in the United States. Very, 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 very handy. I look at it constantly. In association with that, I have this book here, Business and Legal Forms for Illustrators by Tad Crawford. He wrote it with the Graphic Artist Guild who wrote the Pricing and Ethical Guidelines Handbook. This is an older book and it is definitely not essential. This is the third edition that I got on Amazon and I feel better for having it as a point of reference because as you can see here, it has a lot of different information about property releases and contracts and business licensing and all kinds of important stuff if you're an illustrator. It covers all that. So does the Graphic Artist Skill Pricing and Ethical Guidelines Handbook. I just like having this on my desk because I feel like I'm a little bit more covered with general info about contracts and licensing and things like that because I, I feel like I can never be too informed about that. Next in my book list, I've had this one for a while. This one here is Becoming a Successful Illustrator by Derek Brazell and Joe Davies. Um, these guys are both members of the AOI, they were actually board members to begin with, so they know their shit. <laughs> if you don't know the AOI, it is the Association of Illustrators. Very, very handy um, information from them. They are UK based and so is this book. So they take into consideration things like VAT and so on. But the general information here is really handy, especially if you're starting in the illustration field. I highly recommend it. Um, this has been my point of reference for like the last four years, so I strongly advise you get a copy of this. The lucky last book on my agenda is The Illustrator's Guide to Law and Business Practices. This is by Simon Stern and he is also part of the AOI. I like this book the most for its sections. <laughs> it goes must read, should read, and then need, read when needed kind of things. I've read the must and should. <laughs> but I haven't read the when needed because obviously I haven't needed any of it yet. So this is really handy. Again, UK based, so things like VAT are considered, um, which is fine, but if you are U US or Australia based, I would get your hands on something more applicable to your own country as well. But this is good to have anyway, just as a general rundown of information. Other references that you should have are on how to be paid fairly and how to be treated fairly and all the good things include um, Should I Work For Free? This is a really great website. I will leave a link to that below somewhere. It is really handy for when you're starting out and you've been offered something that may not pay you very well or may not pay you at all. Uh, it's a great little graph that tells you what you should do in that situation. I like to look at what other artists are doing and talking about. My three top illustrators are Fran Erd. If you know me, you know that I love her with my whole heart and I'm actually a patron of hers. She is very forward about how she gets treated in the industry and she's very cool. She's very uh, worldly. <laughs> she's lived in like four different countries and this is the second country I've ever lived in. So hearing her talk about all the stuff that she's gone through living in like the UK and Germany and Chile and stuff is really helpful because it makes me feel less alone going through the same struggles being in Florida. <laughs> So that's something to consider is an illustrator that might have similar experiences to you or who's just more open about their own experiences in the field. Another person I love is Holly Exley. She's a huge advocate for being paid fairly and treated fairly in this profession that we call illustration. So um, I would highly recommend checking her out if that's something you're interested in. And the last one for me is Kendall Hilligus. She is an amazing illustrator. She, um, I think she started out on Tumblr and she does these incredible food paintings and drawings. I love her work so much. And she clears up a lot of questions that I find myself worrying about in like 10 to 15 years, like how am I gonna freelance and have kids? Because I am married and my husband and I have been talking about that road eventually. <laughs> and she makes vlogs about that kind of stuff and about working with editorial clients and all kinds of cool stuff that I am looking at doing in the long run. So that's really helpful to me to find those three female illustrators who 
can relate to my experiences and also give me information about what to do and what to expect and <laughs> what to avoid. <laughs> Another great thing to keep in mind is podcasts. Podcasts are really handy, really useful. I like to listen to the Creative Pep Talk podcast by Andy J Pizza. He is super talented, super crazy talented. Yeah, he's based in Ohio, he's lived all over the place and he is just a fucking gun. <laughs> he's a fucking gun, I don't know how else to say it. He's got so much energy and so much like incredible like information so yeah check him out if you get a chance don't keep your day job with kathy heller is also a great podcast that is more geared towards um people who just want to pursue their dreams and leave their day jobs i definitely have felt on a myriad of levels <laughs> so i recommend her too she's really helpful and the last thing uh is i would check out places like the aoi's website they have some great articles they did an article with lecture space i think it's called i tweeted it i'll leave the link to it below but it was really cool it was really helpful it was about like being treated fairly as an illustrator and asserting your like value and worth and things like that so yeah any information that you can get on your industry is super helpful i think that's everything for me i hope you found this video enlightening or at least a little bit helpful i probably needed to hear this like three years ago I needed someone to grab me by like my shoulders and shake me violently and say wake the fuck up <laughs> so I hope this was a much gentler version of that for you don't be afraid to question a client if they're approaching you with something that you deem unfair don't be afraid to say no to a client if they are presenting you with something unreasonable and don't be afraid to ask for help that's the major thing I only just started talking to people about this in a much more comfortable way it's taken me four years to really sit down with someone and say hey what do I need to do? How do I need to do this? I know I've hit adulthood now because I got excited after I had a meeting with an accountant this week, but it was really helpful to know all the business stuff that maybe someone wouldn't have told me um, until I was 10 years into the game if I'd just gone and done it all off my own back. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to assert yourself and <laughs> just be nice. Thank you for being here guys. I will be back next week and we will be painting and chilling and it'll be great. Uh, I hope you have an awesome weekend and if you're a patron big extra double thank you I really appreciate your support it's so awesome to have you here and yeah that's it <laughs> I'll see you next week bye I don't know how long I'm going to be able to actually film, so... Fingers crossed! Do I have Oreo in my teeth? I probably do. I'm just going to live with that. <coughs> okay. If you're new here, hi. Hi. can find the exits here. God, anyway. And, I'll be honest, I was feeling a bit bitter when I decided to make this video. <coughs> Is that all done? And if I can help you prevent further burns, further burns. <laughs> I do have other, um, bleh. these are all illustrators and artists. So I feel like I butchered that. Was my accent funny? Do I talk funny now? Do I talk like an American? I don't want to talk like an American. That's legit my biggest fear. My sister and my cousin were on Skype with me like a month ago. And they were like, you said something really strange, like an American. And I was like, no, I didn't. And they were like, yeah, you did. And I think I said Canada because <laughs> I was making fun of justice. <laughs> but it's Canada. It's Canada, damn it. Um, are they ruck are they, are they ructant? I don't want to know if they're ructant. That sounds really rank. Um, and, and I would be, yeah, I would be wary of, weary, I always say that. And he is a member of the Graphic Artists Guild. So I think he is. This is becoming a successful. Uh, blah, blah, blah. This one here is becoming. Why? Why does this happen? This one here is becoming. Fuck me, dead. That and things like that are more considered in this, which isn't an issue in any US. US. <laughs> Don't keep your day. Blah, blah, blah.